Hey there, everybody. I'm now at a site that is for sure pre-cataclysmic called Sacse Waman, up above and outside Cusco, Peru. Um, these formations behind me are natural formations. Uh, people have kind of slid down on the other side of these things many times. They're super smooth. But what's really interesting here is what's behind me over here. Check out this wall. <laughs> yeah. So let's review, shall we? <laughs> the stories that the anthropologists are telling people about this and other sites around the world that people a long time ago, the Incas and maybe pre-Incas, had primitive tools like copper and bronze, and they were, you know, cutting these stones with, you know, these basic tools, or they had pounding stones made of dolerite, which is supposedly harder than these stones, which I think is granite. But the precision and megalithic size of these things is pretty much ridiculous. Here, let me just flip this over so I can uh, go like this. Okay, so. <laughs> It's just kind of crazy to think that there's still people getting PhDs in anthropology who don't adhere to the fact that there was a ridiculously advanced civilization that predated the Incas and predated dynastic Egypt and predated the Mayans. Because, you know, all over the world, and I've been starting to go to these places one by one, you see the same style, the same characteristics, and it's just massive in size. You know, here's a nice example of the puffiness, again, that we see. It looks like marshmallows, right? It looks like these rocks were sculpted to be exactly fitting. Sometimes the seams are, you know, fused together. Look at the size of this cornerstone. That is not a small stone. Let me get out of the sun here. Now, thankfully, there was, I don't know about thankfully, but there were some earthquakes at one point, which loosened the stones. And I don't know if you can see how accurate it is in there, but that is just perfect and smooth all the way along the inside as well. Thanks you guys for commenting. I always love seeing where everybody is from. Uh, give us a shout out and, and tell us where you're joining us from. I was originally born in New York and I live in Colorado and California, but I really enjoy cruising around the world and checking out different cultures. And this is my first time to Peru. And I'm very impressed <laughs> to say the least at the constructions that we observe around here, especially these kinds of super ancient sites. Look at the precision of these cuts. And this cornerstone right here looks about around the same size as the pillars at the Osiren Temple in Abydos, which is a couple hundred kilometers down the Nile from the Giza Plateau. Those stones are 67 tons, we know. So I would guess this one's around 67 tons as well. And it's just sitting here perfect, like Lego style. Just every curve just matched. You can see some scoop marks right there. And the corners, perfect seams, more cut marks right there. Let's see what else we got. Look at the level of erosion on this rock. Presumably they didn't use an eroded rock. It was smooth, right? And this rock down here at the bottom was probably smooth. And then it eroded. And how long does it take for water to erode a rock like this and make it all pockmarked like that? It's not in the thousands of years, you guys. It's probably in the tens of thousands of years. Poor Robert Schock, when he first decided to say that he thought the Sphinx was older than, he, than most people thought, due to the level of water erosion on the back and on the encasing around the Sphinx. He went to an archeological conference and they kind of tricked him into presenting his work and then they ridiculed him and said, oh really, you think there's 
an advanced civilization that's older than pre-dynastic Egypt? Great, show us the evidence of that culture somewhere else in the world. And of course, at that time, he didn't have the evidence because this was before they discovered Gobekli Tepe. If you're not familiar with Gobekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey, check it out because that civilization was highly advanced and built megalithic structures 13,000 years ago. 11 to 13,000 years ago is what the carbon dating shows. Look at all these cut marks in here. You're not just coming along with copper tools and moving multi-ton, dozens of ton megaliths. This one is also as big, if not bigger than the ones at the Osirin in, in Abydos. So that could be a 75 ton rock. You're just not pulling 75 ton rocks with vine ropes and slaves, I'm sorry. And yet, it's kind of built into the standard model of archaeology that that's how they did this. And I think we're probably still telling kids today that's what's happening. We've heard, we've seen guides walking around, like this guy with the flag, saying, "Oh yeah, the Incas built this." Blah blah blah. Come on now, look at the size of the rock behind this guy. That is no small feat. This one's probably like a hundred tons. We don't know how far back it goes. Let's go up. He's gonna do his talk in Spanish, so I won't understand, maybe some of you will, but I'm gonna take off here and go up this staircase to the next level. Thankfully the wind died down a little bit, so it's not too windy. Oh, look, scoop marks. How are you doing this exactly with your copper tools in the face of the granite? <laughs> Never mind what I said about the wind. There's the wind again. Again, for anybody just joining, this is Saksa Mulan outside Cusco, Peru. Pre cataclysmic wall. And when I say pre cataclysmic, I'm talking. Three, ten to 12,000 years ago when there were a series of events that struck the earth here. Graham Hancock would say it's probably a meteor or a comet that broke up in the northern hemisphere atmosphere and caused major damage. Flash vaporized the polar ice caps. Made a huge amount of ice flash vaporize and melt making the sea levels rise by three to four hundred feet in a short period of time and submerging any advanced civilization that was around at the time and it looks like that advanced civilization was worldwide here's a classic example of Inca, or that might even just be modern repairs, trying to fill in the gap where a stone is missing. You can see they couldn't use a giant stone because it's not very easy to do, even with today's technology. Now that we have Gobekli Tepe, now that we have the stones at Baalbek in Lebanon, now that we have Saxe Woman and all these other sites in Peru, and sites like Tiwanaku and Puma Punku in Bolivia that we were just at last week. Look at that, look at that curve. They just curved the rocks on the seam, no problem. Sculpting away, look at how they're puffed out. Now that we have evidence that is similar, I mean, you could be standing here and be like, wait, am I at the base of the Menkare Pyramid on the Giza Plateau, the third smaller pyramid? Well, smaller of the three big ones, there's nine of them on the plateau, but... And this just goes on and on, you guys. And then there's terraces all around the mountains. Can't see so many right here, but as you drive around Peru, almost every mountain has terraces on it. And they're not farming on those up high terraces. They farm on the ones that are close to the valley floor because you can actually get your animals and your plow there. But... 
why would you cut terraces way, way up high on the mountain? I mean, it's not even easy to climb stairs right here. We're at about 12,000 feet in elevation. Apologies to all the major <laughs> countries around the world that do not use feet and inches. I think there's three countries that use that. I apologize. This is Americans. <laughs> in any case, 12,000 feet means you're huffing it. Here's a nice one. Look at this puffy guy with the cool shape. Oh no, man. <laughs> so one of the theories goes that they had a high energy technology that they were able to energize the rock and basically plasmify it like cold plasma and make it soft and then just say, okay, what do we need? A shape right there? Okay, just stick a rock in there and then, you know, trim it scrape it off because it's soft and then let's put another rock on top of it and the mass of the rock on the top smushes down the other rock and makes it puffy like this see how and then there are these knobs it's like maybe you had a tool and when you pulled the tool away it left this knob any jewelers out there will know what i'm talking about right so yeah it's just time to start telling the correct story, or at least that we don't know, and just stop saying that we think the Incas were doing this stuff. The Incas found this, and then they said, oh, let's set up our town here. Kind of like the Egyptians found the pyramids and the Sphinx, and said, oh, this is nice. I'll set up right here. Or King Seti I, who found the Osirin and said, I want my temple to be next to the Osirin. And then the Osirin's 50 feet below the level of the desert. And the archaeologists and anthropologists say, oh, isn't that cool? They dug a hole and built a temple. <laughs> it's like, really, you guys? Check this out. They, like, put hash marks on that stone to make it look like three stones. But that's one stone. So it looks like they were just able to take a little tool and scrape into granite and make hash marks and score it. No problem and have these curved stones here. Let's go right into some of these seams, right? It's like perfect. And then an earthquake came and made it shift slightly. But on the inside of these cracks, it's smooth. And let's see if I can find a spot where it's practically fused together. There's a nice one. You can see where it pinches. And I know I've been saying this everywhere I go, but it's like the same evidence <laughs> all over the place. This looks like the Menkari Pyramid. It looks like, uh, where else does this look like? I mean, we saw sites like this all over Peru, but the best example that looks like this is in the Osirin on the back left wall. There's some of these puffy rocks that with the knobs and then also the Menkari Pyramid. And then you have these massive megalithic blocks as well at the uh, Valley Temple, which is at the foot of the Sphinx. That's highly precise. And those are really flat and smooth and not puffy like this. But these are the classic marshmallow stones, as we like to call them. And yeah, it just goes on and on. There's so much. This is just one site and it's fairly large. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of megalith, megalithomania. And uh, let me know where you guys are from in the comments, because I love seeing where everybody's from. See my friend Stuart on there. What's up, Stu? <laughs> I've known Stuart since I was 11 years old. My brother. I guess I'll keep going now that Stuart's watching. <laughs> so, all right, I haven't been up these stairs yet. Let's go up here.
Might as well cruise around a little more. See what else we can find. There's a little niche. International tourists from all over the world. You hear all different languages when you walk around this place. Quite a few local Peruvians though too. Hola. Okay. Actually, I think I might be heading up towards the view of Cusco. That's a good thing to show you. It's Sunday, I think. So the families are out. There's some walls on the other side. You can see there's a dig happening on the back left. There's the natural formations across the way. A couple of nice big blocks over here. They built this uh, hut thing to protect some of the site over there. Whew. Hiking at 12,000 feet. Sun is no joke either. Sorry about the wind. I'm trying to cup it and stop the wind, but. Okay. Get a good overview of the site right here. You guys know of any other uh, sites around the world where you've seen rocks like this hit me up in the comments I'd love to know post some pictures it's time for us to all expose the evidence because the evidence is there it's not fair to just make up a story and think that that's what it is you gotta look at the evidence on the ground like do some physics Go ahead and grab a 80 ton boulder and a bunch of people with vine ropes and start pulling it. Because these rocks don't just come from nearby. When we were all at Ole Tambo, they were talking about how the, if I wasn't currently the quarry was across the mountain range at the top of another mountain. So how are they pulling those down and bringing them back up again? I doubt they had prehistoric alpacas. Okay. I think I'm up at the top. You can check out Cusco. There's Cusco in the background. Some sort of circular structure made with much smaller stones. So I would guess that's Inca. That's Inca making something at the top of the mountain above this stuff that they found. If you go back on my page and the Nassim Haramein page and the Resonance Science Foundation page, in the last couple of weeks, there's a bunch more video showing this area. And there you have Cusco. Very cute town. You have it. Sacse Woman, Cusco, Peru. Until the next site, somewhere out there in the world. Thank you guys for following the page. Check out the music. And uh, much love to you all.